news. The shadow chancellor, Rachel Reeves, has said the cost of living crisis has left her increasingly short financially, despite her £86,000 a year salary. The Labour MP has said she winces at her bank balance each month, with her mortgage, gas, electricity and food bills all adding up. Meanwhile, Sir Howard Davies, the chairman of NatWest Bank, calls to storm by saying it's not that difficult to get on the housing ladder. He has since retracted his comments. But do these kind of remarks prove that the elite in this country are out of touch with ordinary Brits? And do Labour still represent the working class? Let's speak to the founder of the popular consumer finance website, moneymagpie.com. Good friend of the show, regular pundit Jasmine Bertels. Jasmine, your reaction to these remarks by Rachel Reeves? Well, yes, it was very interesting to hear Rachel Reeves' um, remarks because on the one hand, as you say, it does show a little bit of um, be, her being out of touch. You think 86 grand, come on, you're going to have to, you're going to be able to cope. But she might have very big mortgage. I mean, if she lives in London, she probably does have a very big mortgage. Um, and maybe she has all sorts of um, parties that she has to, to do for people, you know, and that's a, a, an extra food bill. So she probably does have higher costs than others. But I get the feeling that she, she was probably being honest, but also trying to come across as a woman of the people. Because as you point out, increasingly, the Labour Party doesn't feel like the party of the people, the party mm. of the workers. Um, and and it, it almost feels, as rather with the Tory party, to be honest, that the, the, there are two there are two parties within that one party. As I say, in the, with the Tory party, that feels like you've got the centrists and you've got those that, that are, are wanting to break away, that are wanting low taxes, that are wanting low Im immigration, etc. Mm. And same in Labour, you've got the centrists and then you've got those the workers, uh, Jeremy Corbyn's lot, really. Um, and it, it, it's very, very difficult, I think, to keep both two together. And I'm wondering whether it's even worth it now. Which well, yeah, I mean, is she, is she, Jasmine, is she being punished for just being honest? Um, 86 grand a year, it's a, it's a lot of money. Is, is she rich? Is she not rich? Is she in the squeezed middle? Yeah, I think in London, certainly that is the squeezed middle. And, and you know, I do say this quite regularly about um, politicians' um, pay, that it's nowhere near high enough, I consider. I mean, that's a very unpopular thing to say. But I do think that when it comes to politicians, you pay peanuts, you get monkeys. Boy, have we got some monkeys. Um, and, and I think really, you know, it, it should be twice what they're getting. Because 86 grand... Um, I mean, you, you could be a sort of middle ranking marketing person in, in some, you know, some company middle of in the middle of London who does very little, frankly. And, and MPs are supposed to be running the country. They're supposed to be representing us. They're, they're, it's, they're really important jobs. So really, I consider they should be much higher paid, but have far fewer expenses because, you know, as we know, we've had all sorts of expenses issues. Oh, yeah. Um, but certainly... Yeah, I'm hearing from people who on my website, Money Magpie, people um, who are you know on similar sort of amounts of money and saying, "I'm sick of all the tax. I'm sick of being taxed so much. I'm sick of of losing money on this, that, and the other." They are feeling poor. People are, are you know, as you say, the squeezed middle. Uh, unless you're on millions, I think nearly everybody in the country now is feeling hard done by and feeling squeezed. Well, yes, poor old Luke uh, Littler, we've been talking about him, got to the final of the darts this week. 200 grand prize money. He'll be lucky if he sees half of that. Uh, let's bring in a quick reaction, if I, if I can, Jasmine, uh, from our top panel tonight. Diana Moran, Benedict Spence and Precious Muir. Precious... Labour MP struggles to get by on £86,000. This will go down like a lead balloon in Labour areas, won't it? I think so. I think she was actually trying to come across as, like, relatable. But she doesn't seem mm. to understand she's actually getting paid twice as much as the UK, you know, average UK um, citizen. So she's just saying the things that we obviously can relate to in regards to high mortgages, high rent, uh, utility bills have gone up, things that we can relate to, but her mm. wages, most people in this country cannot. So she doesn't come across very well, in my opinion. Benedict, is this a political mistake that she's made as she puts her foot in it? Is it a gaffe? Will it be damaging? Uh, it's a very minor one. It is a gaffe. I think it's correct to say, though, that... 
Uh, increasingly, I think people are going to find that £86,000 isn't as much as they thought it was. It's certainly not as much as it used to be, and that's going to be the same for everybody in every single bracket. That's the effect of inflation and a lack of growth in any country, and I think that that's something that people are uh, beginning to understand. But, yes, it makes us sound slightly uh, less in touch with people who don't live in London, because, of course, this is a very sort of London-centric thing. But is it going to massively hurt... Uh, the Labour Party, I, I doubt it would shift the dial even one point, uh, even for a week, frankly, simply because of the general malaise that the country feels it's, itself in. You can point out that inflation is very high, you can point out that wages aren't rising in line with it, and most people would say, well, that's not Labour's fault, that's the Tories. Yes, I mean, is there a danger, briefly, Diana Moran, if you can, is there a danger that we're punishing politicians for being honest and, and saying the truth about their own situation? Um, possibly, yes, but I do feel that in this case, if she can't manage on 86 grand and she's got a husband who's earning a lot of money as well, then I'm a bit worried about her. How can we trust her with the UK economy? There you go. Uh, Jasmine Bertles, do come back and see us again in the studio soon. Jasmine Bertles is the founder of the popular uh, consumer financial website moneymagpie.com.